blowing out all of that air. So let's just begin in a comfortable place. Make sure you have about 15 minutes of quiet time. And let's go ahead and inhale. You're gonna fill the belly, then the ribs and the chest with air. And just draw that breath up to your collarbones and then exhaling the chest, the ribs, the belly gliding in and down. But as you're exhaling, make sure you're blowing out all of the air all the way down to your pubic bone. And then once again, inhaling through the nose, that slows the breath coming in. And exhaling through pursed lips, blowing out all of that air. Once again, inhaling, allowing that chest to expand, the collarbones to open, and exhaling, really blowing out all of that air. And I'll let you just continue that breath on your own. What we don't want to do is force the breath. So we're trying to relax. We don't want any tension in the neck or the shoulders. So when we draw that breath in, just take it to that comfortable place in the collarbones and then immediately begin that inhale. So think of your breath as circular. You're going immediately from the inhale to the exhale and immediately from the exhale to the inhale but we do want to draw out that exhale, making it longer. So I'm playing an so audio. Again, I hope you guys can hear it. I'm not able to hear belly, any of you guys. I don't know the why. Ribs and the chest. And exhaling through pursed lips. Everything gliding in and down all the way to that pubic bone. Continuing your breath at your pace. So this is a deep relaxation breath to slow our heart rate. Over time, you want to make this breath cycle as smooth as you can. To slow our respiration and therefore to bring down our blood pressure as well. No need to hold the breath. No need to create tension. Breathing in and drawing all that energy into the body. Breathing out through pursed lips, slowly blowing out all of that air, relaxing everything in and down.
Inhaling in through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. Creating that circle of life, that circle of your breath. Inhaling, relaxing any tension in the mouth or the jaw. Exhaling smoothly, blowing out of all of that air through your lips. Gently inhaling through the nose. No need to create tension. No need to hold your breath. Exhaling through the mouth. Creating that natural rhythm for you.
You're doing great. Exhaling, blowing out all of that air. Inhaling, continuing that smooth circular rhythm and exhaling, collapsing everything down all the way to that pubic bone. Inhaling and exhaling. I, go, I went ahead and turned off the audio um, for the breathing exercise so um, we can finish with going over some information on potassium. But I just wanted you guys to see that's that Just Breathe audio and it is in our group. It's also attached to your calendar. If you guys are having any trouble seeing your calendar and the things that you're supposed to try to do each day, uh, let me know. Um, there's just a lot of relaxation out there. And then um, I'm here to help with the diet as well. But a lot of you guys can focus on the relaxation on your own once you kind of get the hang of it. With this breath, um, the relaxation breath, we want to, there to be an inhale through the nose and then a longer exhale through the mouth. So when I cue it, I cue breathing in through the nose up to the collarbone and then exhaling and then taking it all the way down to that pubic bone. So just so you're blowing out all of that air. And uh, the idea here is that when we increase the exhale, we actually can slow our respiration, slow our um, heart rate, and therefore bring our blood pressure down as well. So they actually recommend that you practice this type of breath for about 15 to 20 minutes um, every other day. And if you can practice every other day, I think that's a great thing to do. I personally try to practice 
um, some type of uh, longer breathing technique every day for about 20 minutes. So it might be this uh, deep breathing or it might be transcendental meditation, which has been shown to bring blood pressure down as well. And then I try to do a shorter uh, 10 minute relaxation, whether it's a progressive relaxation or an autogenic training, which I'm going to teach in the Thursday class. And it will also be, you'll have some samples um, hooked into uh, the virtual gym onto your calendar as well. Um, and progressive relaxation is, um, we'll be studying that starting next week, but that's also another way to help you relax. And particularly before our bedtime, that can help you to calm down. Um, so apologize, I can't hear any feedback from you guys today. I don't know um, what's going on with my audio, but um, I will go ahead and just go through these slides here. So I've got Hello. more. Oh, there. Okay. So you unmuted. Okay. Sometimes well, it started, it started the work apparently. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. So I don't know. It wasn't working before. Um, usually I have someone that's unmuted and they're talking to me. So I um, appreciate you checking in here, Jim. So, okay. But yeah, definitely work some relaxation into your life. And last week we did uh, sodium and um, increasing also um, let's see, what did we do? We did so decreasing sodium and increasing calcium in the diet. And there's a lot of information in your book, some recipes and foods that are highlighted that are gonna help you to do that. And then the, today we're talking about increasing potassium. And increasing potassium is important because potassium and sodium work together in your body. And so what's happened is as we've increase the amount of sodium we're taking in, in particular from fast food. Um, we've had to raise the guidance for potassium. So there's a sodium potassium pump in our body. It helps to move uh, nutrients into the cells and waste products out of the cells. So that's why it's so important to make sure you're getting plenty of potassium in the diet. So let me move on here. So potassium in the body, I just listed some of the functions here. It helps with that nerve to nerve function. It helps the muscles to contract. It helps the heartbeat to stay regular. So if you're not getting too, enough potassium or if you're getting too much potassium and you're not excreting it well, um, you're, you can have heart arrhythmias. So that can be very serious. Um, and again, as I said, that diet rich in potassium helps to offset uh, sodium's harmful effects. So the recommendation is 3,400 to 4,700 milligrams per day. And um, if you can get closer to that 4,700 milligrams per day, that would be ideal. So potassium and high blood pressure. Again, um, foods rich in potassium help with high blood pressure because they help us to excrete, allow the kidneys to excrete more sodium through our urine. So that helps to keep our blood pressure down. And potassium also helps to ease the vessels. So the tension in the walls. So that's another way that uh, potassium functions with um, high blood pressure. So if you are in good health otherwise, um, they recommend that you increase that potassium in the diet to up to that 4,700 milligrams. Um, even if your blood pressure is above that 120 over 80. If you do have any uh, problems with kidney issues um, and you're not excreting potassium well, then you would wanna talk with your doctor because they would probably want to uh, watch the amount of potassium that you're getting in your diet. And that's why I don't recommend um, that you use a potassium salt substitute, uh, KCL, because um, I think they call it new salt. Um, because you can get too much of that in your diet and that can mess with um, that sodium potassium pump. So I recommend you stay away from that unless you, um, again, talk with your doctor. And um, again, so potassium is very important for, for regulating, but if your kidneys aren't working well, which can be a consequence of high blood pressure over time or of diabetes, um, then you'll want to watch the amount of potassium that you're taking and your doctor will want to check that. So just one final slide here. Um, 
I've got some foods that are rich in potassium. Um, and again, these are in your book. So as you're going through the book, I think it's pages maybe seven or I think five and six list a lot of the um, potassium rich foods and they're highlighted. So if you look at the top uh, row, it will say potassium and it will say K beside that. Uh, potassium used to be called callium with a K and that's how it got its uh, K for on the periodic table. Um, but these are foods that you could increase in your diet to help increase that potassium. So um, wheat bran, kashi golin, uh, I recommended that as a cereal. Uh, granola, of course, we got to watch calories here too. Um, sweet potatoes, avocado, edamame, um, spring mix salad. Um, lima beans are another great source. Some of our beans are um, really high in potassium. Butternut squash, um, milk, yogurt, salmon black beans, kidney beans, lentils, and coconut water. So if you get to the end of the day and you don't have enough potassium in, you might want to consider drinking a cup or two of coconut water because it's very uh, rich in potassium. So um, I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to see if I can get to our... Let's see if I open up one more thing here. Give me just a second here. Hopefully I can get this shared. Oh, there. Okay, so if you do get into our um, trainer ice group, which is our virtual gym, hopefully you've all been able to get in there. This is our scroll. Um, I try to post stuff out there fairly regularly. There's recipes and other such things. Uh, but I wanted to draw your attention to this uh, potassium rich smoothie. And this is one that I make. Um, it's listed, I think, on page seven or eight in the book um, for on maybe under breakfast foods and smoothies. Um, and again, you can look at those lists and those foods that I've combined together to help give you a really high dose of potassium. So several of those meals will have, you know, um, 900 to maybe 1500 milligrams of potassium in there. But um, this is a great smoothie. And if I just go out here, oops, here. Um, and it actually tastes good too. So you might be worried about that because of the ingredients in it. Um, but six ingredients, very easy to make. And I try to make this a couple times a week and we split it. Um, but use a small banana, a cup of spinach, a small avocado. Um, it says one large orange juice, but I usually just throw in half a cup of orange juice. I throw in a, a cup of uh, frozen mango and then a cup of coconut water. I guess you can add honey too if you wish. Um, but it's usually sweet enough from the banana, I think. Um, and I go ahead and blend that in my high speed blender. And that usually makes um, two to three servings, depending on how much you want to drink. Uh, but a great way you're going to get, um, if you split that in half, you're going to get probably at least 1200 milligrams of sodium just from that drink right there. And that could be a smoothie that you have for breakfast or um, later in the day before exercising or after exercising. So a great way to get um, some potassium into your diet. Let's see if I can close out of there. Um, again, on the scroll, and just, I'm not sure how much you guys can see, but as far as, um, let me go into our program, just so you are aware. And if you're not seeing your calendar, please let me know. It should show up uh, when you get into the virtual gym. And I've created uh, this program that I've shared with you guys. And um, I can't see the calendar personally because I'm listed as the trainer, 
but you ought to be able to see, uh, for example, these are the things that I prescribed that we do today. I don't want you guys stressing out about everything, but trying to do what you can. Um, so increasing potassium, you guys do, are doing the Zoom with me, which included the breath work and the increasing potassium uh, information. But if you want to go back and watch either of those, you can. Um, I also recommended you get some walking or cardio in today. We're trying to get 150 minutes of cardio in a week. And then um, again, you can click on anything. Let's say, for example, uh, this Wednesday, we're supposed to do some transcendental meditation on your own, and it should bring up the screen. You should be able to click right on here, and it will take you right in. Again, you can pull these up from the group as well. That's rather loud. Uh, but hopefully you guys are getting getting the, the notion here. So I just kind of wanted to go review some of that with you. So in case you hadn't got a little bit of time to experiment in there that you can um, get in there. So when you sit, get into your uh, personal trainer ice group, you should be, or into the uh, blood pressure group, you should be able to see uh, the group scroll and the calendar. So do you guys have any questions for me? No, not right now. Okay, super. Well, hey I'll Sandy, I I have a question. Sure. Uh, this this might be a dumb one, but can, can, do you buy coconut water at the grocery store? Yes, yes. Um, okay. It's usually with the all the beverages because okay. I think it's probably canned by Coke or Pepsi or one of those one of those companies. But yeah, it's usually in the beverage aisle, um, or you can find it at the health food market sometimes in the fridge at the health okay. market. So, yep, great way to increase the potassium. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you for coming today. And uh, if you can ever make the, the regular class, uh, you're welcome to show up there or show up for Zoom or do on your own. So uh, whatever you need to do to, to start to uh, relax and learn about uh, all the foods that help to bring down your blood pressure. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.